Hi, my name is Liz. I'm a physical therapist and owner of The Ride Life, which is a fitness and coaching platform for women mountain bikers. Today, I'm going to talk about hand issues and how that relates back to the strength of your core. So whenever we think about hand issues, we think about pressure control, we think about gripping, we think about how we can change our setup. Those things are really important to note. They're really important to change and alter, can make important, very large differences for you. But a lot of times you don't think about why you have so much pressure on your hands to begin with. Why are you putting and loading that so much? And a lot of it comes down to what else should you be using to offload and to control and help with it versus just resolving and reality on the fact that you have to weight over top your hands and that's part of what keeps your trunk upright. Well, a lot of times it's that you don't need to push your trunk to stay upright. You need to use other muscle groups that are around to help you stay upright. It's the reason why I don't have to have my hands on the spike. I can use my trunk, my core, my back muscles, my shoulder blade muscles, my abs and my hips, my hamstrings to all give me that control, to all give me that stability where I don't need to have something weighted to hold up that section. Yes, you can have it where this is holding some of the weight of your upper body, or you can have it where I don't need that and I'm using all of these muscles to help me distribute that force back towards my hips. That's where a lot of people go wrong is they think they just need to change the cockpit, but it's that they actually need to work on their core strength. They need to work on their, on their back extensor strength. They need to work on their hip hinge and understanding actually how to move at your hips versus your low back versus your upper back and waiting over through here. If I'm pushing and waiting through here, then I'm not going to be able to get my, get my trunk and control on to offload that. And same thing whenever we're, we're up and out of the saddle is that I don't want to be pulling back on this to gain stability and being drugged by the bike. I want to be able to be strong in this position, have strong back, have strong shoulders, and put the weight in through my hips, through my legs, down into my feet. Be heavy on those feet, light on the hands, and then when you need more traction control for your front wheel, you can apply that and then unapply it. It's all about giving your hands, giving these other things breaks, so you don't overdo it. You're not over gripping. You're not over pressuring onto that to help keep your entire body upright. And you can tell whenever if you get on the bike, just go through this. Do you collapse into it and let your arms and hands take the weight? Or do you know what it's like to actually offload that and feel that difference of your trunk turning on, of your body knowing how to utilize this control to offload your hands to offload what all your upper body, your upper back has to do. And so you're, you're utilizing all these things put together in combination. You know, you're not overweighting your arms. And so sometimes the answer to your hand issues, your hand pain, your hand numbness and things like that is because you're putting pressure on these other aspects or that you're over gripping your other doing these things, but it's that you need to distribute that load back to your trunk back to your hips, back to your feet, which is your other base of contact with the bike when you're up and out of the saddle. And so you can understand that, that loading, that control for being in this position, but without loading your hands. I hope this makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. Cheers, guys.